Hi everyone, welcome back into the Academy here at Chesterfield Golf Club. It's lovely to have you along for another one on the channel. My name is Warren Bennett. We've got our four-legged friend Trev down there looking pretty chilled, so he's hopefully out of harm's way on the floor behind me. Hey Trev. So this one's all about taking tips onto the golf course. Now, I'm going to give you 10, um, but obviously you don't do that 10. It's not in no, no specific order. Um, but as you've seen on the channel, there's plenty of videos here working on mechanics and how we move and how we can swing our club more efficiently. But sometimes when it's not quite working well or you're in the middle of a round and it's not quite happening, you kind of need one of those little tips and feels just to kind of get you through that day. Um, you know, from the club golfer through to the professional, we all need that little tip and all that little feel to take out there. You know, in a perfect world, we stand there and swing it and hit it. But I guarantee 99.9% .9 of golfers and the professionals you see on TV have kind of got a little feel they take out on there, or maybe two. So I'm gonna give you my 10. This isn't my favorite 10, but this is ones I think that can help you out. In no particular order, no in order of importance. So let me get on to number one. Rightio, number one, isn't that time for me to kind of set up the back camera? Guess what? <laughs> He's in the way. So Trevor, we're gonna have to get you to move, but I Good boy, you sit there and stay there and hopefully learn something. Good boy. All right, all right, you have to stay there, Trevor. All right, you're in a bit, bit of a danger range there. Um, so each one's gonna be kind of a dual feeling. So I'm gonna give two little feels to each one I give you. So let me explain. So number one is gonna be how we grip the club. And it's gonna go, we're gonna kind of pass through these pretty quickly. So finger grip. Finger grip in the left hand, so it'd be obviously for a right-handed golfer, we're gonna reverse it, obviously for left. Get it right into your fingers, across your fingers, so it's kind of more in there, so you, when you wrap it over, you're wrapping your thumb the other side of the grip. And the same with the right. The more you can get it into your fingers, the more the club is able to swing. And in that mode, you want to try and get it as light as possible. I would say these three fingers of your top hand, they want to be the one with a little bit of pressure so you can hold it. Obviously, you don't want it too light, but you want to try and keep that softness as much as you can, just so you can feel the weight of the golf club. So the more you can kind of feel that weight, the more you get it into your fingers, it's the easier it is to actually do this, and keeping that pressure light throughout the whole swing. So there's no tension. So if you squeeze, try and squeeze the petra out of the grip, you're not going to be able to use your wrist sufficiently. So in your fingers, Nice and light, especially the bottom hand, it's kind of going along for the ride, keeping that tension very light throughout the whole swing. Kind of makes the, um, makes the club go a little bit heavier and it's easier to swing. So that's number one, let's get on to number two. So, like I said, you don't have to think about all these things. Um, out of these 10, one or two might speak to you. Um, you might be good in other parts and not so good in the other. So one of these might speak to you and go, oh, I'll take that on the course tomorrow. That might help me. So number two is how we stand. So a lot of people, if you stood incorrectly and if you had your chin into your chest and your kind of your pockets are out here too much, you can see kind of a two rounded look. There's no way I can make an effective backswing and follow through and obviously a shot from there. It's going to be very hard. So I'd like you to kind of stick your like kind of straighten your arch of your back at the bottom, not too much, but kind of get your bum out a little bit more and then your chin out. So number two is chin away from your chest and bum away. So you can see there I'm creating much more of an athletic look to allow this motion to happen. If I stand like this with my pelvis kind of locked that way, I'm not gonna be able to move at all. I'm gonna be all wrong and swinging the club with different and the wrong parts of the body. The more you can stand getting your bum out, getting your weight back away from you, you don't want too much weight on your toes, and get your, ch get your chin away from your chest so you're kind of looking down your nose a little bit and that's gonna give you the room for your shoulders to swing back and through. All right, so that's number two. Let's get on to number three. Okay, number, number three is the last setup one. Um, it's kind of left foot out, because if you have your left foot in, it's kind of restricting your follow through. So the more you can have your left foot turned out, not your right, your right can turn out a little bit. So you're looking a little bit like that. It's obviously exaggerated to show you. You don't want to be pigeon toed at all. That's going to lock your knees and you're going to be ineffective the way you're moving your legs from there. So the way you can move, especially if people have had um, knee operations, especially the left, it really helps them twist on the way through without putting tension into the left um, knee. 
Um, but if you've got your left knee flared out, it's going to restrict your backswing. So I would, I would, if you've got a bit of problems in your knees, I would flare this out and allow the left heel to come up on the backswing. So you want your left out to help with a little bit of twist. Remember, you can lift your left heel up on the backswing because obviously it's going to help the follow through but resist the backswing a little bit. So you might want to give it a little bit of a reminder by just getting this off a little bit. And then your right arm soft. And that's going to help your finger grip because the more your right hand, right arm gets a bit closer to your body, the more you can't go that way and kind of grip it into your, into your palm. So under, and you can see from the behind view now, I've got my left arm more in the way, so it's going to encourage more of an inside strike. <laughs> that was definitely not a good strike, and that will, um, that will help that. So those two feelings will get you on your way for the backswing. Talking of backswing, that's what we're going to do for number four. So number four is coil and shoulder down. Coil is our belly button twisting. See that? If I had an arrow sticking out of my belly button, it's pointing over 45 degrees behind my right foot. Keeping my head still, but that's not the feeling. It's coil and shoulder down. Now what I mean by shoulder down, you want the majority of your shoulder under your chin. Remember, keeping your, sh your chin away from your chest gives you the room for that. So coil and shoulder down. I'm kind of looking, I can see the majority of my shoulder in the peripheral vision of my eyes there. So coil and shoulder down. Because what you don't want to do for a shot is you don't want this shoulder pulling your head up and then you have to kind of compensate on the way down. So that's number four, is coil your body, which we say a lot in the academy, don't we, in a lot of videos, coil and shoulder under your chin. Okay, let's get on to the fifth one. Okay, so number five, and just, just for um, reference, this is, re this is useful for every single club, from a driver through to, I would say, pretty much every club you hit full out. So number five is low and slow, which we've heard before, haven't we? So getting on that first tee and taking a backswing that's kind of starts off in third or fourth gear can be very hard to create good timing, good rhythm, and it's like a flash and you miss it. So having a more of a rhythmical swing, which we'll get onto further down the line actually, but low and slow, especially for the first like 18 inches, the number, what are we? So number five feeling is low and slow and wide. And we say wide a lot, don't we, in the academy. Width at the top of the backswing is gonna help you. So having it low and slow, so low meaning keeping the club low away from the ground, and then wide. Wide meaning your left arm, obviously for right-handers, is pretty straight at the top of the backswing. What you don't wanna do is lift and have this kind of narrow look here and collapsy, because that's gonna ruin the, the downswing. So keeping it really slow and slow, slow especially, keeping it the first kind of 18, two foot, basically for as long as you can, and you're building up the speed from there. Okay, let's try one. I've only got a seven iron, but low, slow and wide. So you're hopefully gonna recognize a nice width back swing, keeping my left arm locked, my right arm's a little bent. You can see the width is giving me the arms away from me because my left arm is pretty locked. If I bend my left arm, you can see my right arm then comes too close to me and it's got nowhere to go. We say that a lot in our videos. Cause and effect, okay. I'm gonna keep, keep this a bit lower than normal and a bit slower than normal. You can see I've really built up the speed throughout the backswing into the downswing. So, oh, sorry Trev. So especially under pressure, what you wanna do under pressure, you wanna to wanna to keep this rhythmical and keep it nice and smooth away from the ball. Gives you a bit of awareness time as well. Right, okay, let's get on to the next one. So we're halfway through, so on to number six, which is kind of working on the downswing. So it feels like we're kind of doing this in order. There might be ones that are slightly out of order down the line, but anyway. So it's kick and release. So it's this, it's this kind of dual feeling we need. So what I mean by that is at the top of the backswing, people who come over the top kind of keep their back leg on the floor too much, throw their body at it too much, club comes over. So. What you're really looking for, you're looking for a load of lateral motion. So kick, meaning getting your right knee over to your left toe, off the inside of your right shoe, which we worked on a few videos ago, and then it's a release feeling as well. Release, remember, is feeling like your palm up goes to palm down, with your hand only and your forearm. 
obviously your shoulder will be along for the ride, get pulled from, what you don't want to do, and it's easier to feel this, and it's a quick version, as in it's a quick fix, but it's the incorrect one. Remember, what we want to do is kind of just do it with our hands and arms. This is for you over the top, as remember. You hold on to it. What you don't want to do is do it with your shoulder. That's a real no-no. It's the easy one to feel, because you think, yes, I'm releasing it, look. But it's not, because you're just going to smother it, and the ball will tell you it's going to go low and left. If you just did it with your hands and arms only, kind of with your hand only, all this will get pulled along for the ride afterwards. That's the key. So it's a kick and release. It's kind of a dual feeling at the same time. Don't think kick and then release, because by the time you think of kick, the ball's gone. So kick and release, dual feeling. So lateral release. Any of you guys who fat the ball, kind of thin the ball, feel like you're lifting up, that's a great one because the more lateral you can get yourself, you're now in a position for the club to take over from there. Change of direction, if you keep that back foot on the floor, something's got to hit the ball, isn't it? So generally it's going to be your body. And the effect of that generally is kind of chicken wing, lack of release and lifting as well. So number six, kick and release is a really good one. Okay, let's get on to number seven. And number seven, head behind and extend. It's kind of on the same family as what I've just said about the previous one, about kick and release. Head behind and extend. What I mean by that, top of the backswing, is especially for driving this, by the way. What you don't want to do for driving, you don't want this head to go beyond the ball or leaning too much. You can see, it creates a bit more steepness. And then from there, compensation will have to be made. Generally, it's a rock back. Remember, this happens in a split second. Remember, the body wants to balance all the time. So if it gets too left sidey too early, it then rocks back. And everyone feels like, oh, I keep lifting up. It's kind of not the problem. It's the leaning into it's the problem because you're trying to create the power with the head, with the top half, and then it's the lean back. And then there's the chicken wing. That's a result, that's an effect. And that's the cause is generally leaning. So head back and extend. So I'm gonna show you without a ball and I recommend you doing anything new without a ball so you can feel it, what the actual motion feels like. Right, so head, head back, which means keep your head there you can give this a little feeling, remember the kick beforehand, but the extension, remember the extension, but you're not doing it with your body. It's the easiest way to try and feel this club going away from you. What you want to do is with your hands and arms only and push away. So you can see there my head stays relatively still behind the ball. Yes, I'm kicking in my right foot, which I would recommend if you can. Let's flare that left knee, foot out a little bit to help. And I'm really extending, it's probably exaggerated, but it's a great, it's a great um, exercise to do to get away from this back and away. See that? See the difference? Kick and away. So I'm really keeping back. And obviously you don't stop there, you carry on. So it really throws you down the line. Because remember, what we're doing here in golf is we're creating momentum for the club to get to the ball with the maximum speed. We're not trying to, if you back away and lift, that's going to decrease speed, especially compression. If you struggle with drive, remember, if it's only got 10, 12 degrees on the head and you're leaning and you're steep, you're probably minusing half those degrees and you're just going to hit a knuckleball all the time or slice it. Or again, remember what I have to say, you have to back away. There's your slice. So the opposite is head back, do it in slow motion. I'm going to give it a bit of kick as well and then extend through, which allows the arms to swing and the speed is in the arms. We always say it, the arms, like every professional golfer, from about here, they do everything with their arms and obviously their body's all linked as well. But especially for you guys who struggle with pace and distance, this is a great one. So head behind, really extend through. If you wanna feel it, do some breakdowns. <coughs> Hit and hold drill, I'm gonna put the, I'll put the drill in the description below the video, fantastic. Because stopping there gives you the feeling. Obviously you don't stop there when you hit a normal shot. You let it go from there. So that's number seven. Bit of a long one, but let's get on to number eight. And number eight's a bit of a rewind. So sorry, I thought it was gonna be a bit of a mix and match and going back. Um, it's all about loading. We did this for a video or two back. 
is loading the backspring. So it's pocket back and hinge. Fantastic little feeling. Because remember, if you use your body incorrectly, or if you use your legs incorrectly, I apologize, your, your body hasn't got anywhere to go from there. So if, you, if your legs don't move correctly, or you're trying to create too much resistance, your body can't turn, and then your arms are gonna probably create length by collapsing. So getting your pocket back without straightening, you can really feel some loading going on there. Pocket back and hinge up. Remember, that's not your top of the backswing. That's just the starter. So if you have a problem with kind of bringing this club to round, and then over the top, this is a really good one. So I would say, soften those hands, get them in the fingers, pocket back and hinge up. Just keep doing that all the time. The secret to this is don't look while you're doing it. It's easy to look while you're doing it. That's not gonna create the feel you're looking for. So keep looking down at the ball, really exaggerate this pocket going back and point that club up, hinge the club everyone, hinge. And then after that, you just let it go. Keep pulling back. And that's going to create natural length, you see? If you've got a bit of natural length with your arms nice and wide, now you've got somewhere to go. Right, so number eight is pocket back and hinge, because how we start the swing has a massive effect on what goes on, because it's all a cause and effect, and especially from kind of three quarters of the way up, as we know, it's very hard to feel. So how we, have a, how we start has a massive influence about what goes on after that. Okay, so that's number eight, getting close to the end now, number nine. It's all about rhythm and balance because you can get a little bit kind of paralysis by analysis sometimes. I was definite one for that back in the day, trying to feel something and you're thinking about all these positions. A good way to kind of get out of that is to just work on, and it's kind of can be a bit of a plaster over, but remember, if you're out on the golf course and it's not going very well, or this is a really good one if it's windy, is rhythm and balance. So remember, this is a sport where we're moving and we're twisting. And if you're creating good balance, so your feet, you're not losing your balance. So I see a lot of people kind of at the end of their swing holding on with their hip. That just shows you you're kind of in the wrong place. If you can create good balance, and if you've got good balance at the end, so you're creating good balance throughout the whole swing, and you can kind of hold it, then you've created good motion. Because like I said, it's six and one half a dozen. Because if you can stay nice and still, and pose for the camera, we call it, you've probably created quite a good move before that. And rhythm, obviously rhythm can be a mask of kind of technique not being quite right, but there's sometimes, remember, out in the golf course, we can't change our swing. So you have to kind of get the ball round as best you can. And keeping the revs off it is a great one. And you'll be surprised, you may hit it further. What's happened is they're kind of, they've taken the, the, the energy out of their body to try and hit it too hard and it's all gone down there with a club speed. So having good rhythm and having good balance is a real good one to take on the golf course if you're not sure what to do. Right, so let's get on to number 10. Right, folks, so number 10, hopefully you're still with me. Um, number 10 is one that Jack Nicklaus actually always used, I think, or used it in some sort of video back in the day in the 80s, 90s, not sure, is the big muscles have a big effect on kind of what the club and arms do on the downswing. So what I mean by that, the top of the backswing, let's say if we get in a relatively decent position, a lot of people are too quick too early with these, with these um, shoulders, and that has a massive effect of where the club and arms go. Because if my, if my shoulders go too early, it's very, I, th I think I've maybe only seen one person, Jim Furyk, go really open and the club drop Everyone else that I've seen is have, especially club golfers, have a downswing who are over the top, who have a body action that's too open. So a good little feeling I've always thought is, number 10 is back to the target and release. So what I've seen by people, I've seen people work on, or given people work on, as you can see from the front view, you can see more of this blue of my top. So there's the bad one. You can see more of the blue, you see that? So I'm keeping my back to the target, keeping my chest pointing back to the rear camera, and then I'm gonna release from there. So I've given people the back to the target, but because they're, they're open and cut across, what they do from here, and this is where the secondary feeling comes in, is they're keeping their back to the target a little bit longer, but because their arms are uneducated and hands, they keep the club face open, hit it further right. 
So you need the release feeling. This is where the dual feeling is a really good one. So you're keeping your back to the target. That allows your club to drop in the slot and then you're just going to release the club past you. So back to the target and release. Because cause and effect, remember, if this stays nice and passive, it allows the arms to speed up and the club to pass you. It's a fantastic one. You're kind of keeping your shoulder in your chin a bit longer. Feel that? Not away from your chin too quickly. Keep it in, keep it in the way. Obviously massively exaggerated, but that's how I would do it if I wanted to hook it. Right, let's go. Back to the target and release. Although I haven't got the flight scope set up today, I could feel that draw because I was sunk behind it and I gave it a flick of the wrist. Right everyone, so a bit of a longer video this one. I thought it was going to be quite short and sharp, you know me, I quite like a rabbit. So um, yeah, so any feel to take on the golf course is a fantastic one because instead of kind of working on body parts and trying to feel this and trying to, you know, blend all this and mechanics, that's kind of good for the range and kind of at home and stuff like that and practice things. But sometimes we just need quite a simple thought. It doesn't have to be the 10 I had. Um, could be a mix, mix and match of whatever I've said or whatever works for you. And if you're not sure, the rhythm and the balance is a great one. Uh, very simple, but you know it can it can work and help your technique even without you knowing about it just by doing that. So um, if you're new here to the channel, thank you very much for stopping by, and uh, hopefully we've got some content to help you with your golf. If you're a regular viewer, thank you very much for everyone's support. Really appreciate you. Um, stopping by and yeah and supporting the channel hopefully see you tuesday i might have a sub swing for tuesday um, if not i will definitely see you next friday so um, yeah have a great golfing week everyone anyone's comments or any um, kind of feels that you take on the golf course that have worked for you i'd love to hear what those are as well and i could probably pop it into another one in a few weeks time so lovely to have you along and i'll see you next friday from myself and i think trev's given up the ghost down there we'll see you next friday Cheerio.